Wow. Um, I kind of did not expect uh, Danielle and da David and Mariana to be at the final three. I had no idea that they were a day zero alliance. Um, so this is pretty shocking. I really didn't see expect the three of them together to make it this far. Um, and so I, you know, I feel like Danielle and David had similar games, you know, like maybe had a move or two here or like were pushing certain names at certain rounds. I'm not really um, privy to that. I don't know what they really pulled um, to be quite honest. Um, but I am most curious to hear from Mariana because from my perspective, it seemed like she was scrambling every round um, to just get by. And so, I want to know what her biggest move was. What was her gameplay exactly? Um, you know, I don't think she had just looking, you know, like objectively based on my perspective, which does not make sense. But based on my perspective, it didn't seem like she had any moves and she essentially wasted her compass. So, um... Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know what what she did. I felt like she w like essentially wasted her compass. Like if she played it more strategically, I think she would have, you know, won a lot of votes hands down. Um, but I, I don't think she made any moves strategically whatsoever. And that's just like based on my, my perspective. Um, and then Danielle and David are weird cases so Danielle it's interesting because I always believed that it was me her Mike and Olivia that were a four-way alliance right from day zero and so if this was not the case um and she was really true to um D David and Mariana then you know I want her to articulate what her gameplay was in terms of maneuvering to alliances to get her to that point because if it just happened to be luck I don't I wouldn't be satisfied with that answer right I want to know if any of those like relationships um and like her positioning in the game was um strategic because the way I see it I feel like you know she wasn't really considered too much of a threat even though she had played a prior a, like um expedition before I don't think she was considered too much of a threat until the later um challenges when she was really playing on the two alliances with me and Mike and then I guess David and Mariana which is honestly a complete shocker because um yeah I, I don't even think I saw Mariana and David talk to each other for an extended period of time. So I just, I don't know where those two fit in. Because I definitely see Danielle and Mariana together. Um, so I don't know, that's weird. Um, but I really want her, Danielle, to articulate what her gameplay was and what her biggest move was. Um, because I don't know necessarily if there was um, an outright showcase of what her move was. And then, yeah, and she never needed to use her compass because if there were three votes against me during the time she used her compass, like, was that just for show? Like, I just think that was um, kind of insane. And then with David, I don't understand what his big move was. So I will be really interested to hear him plead his case. But as it stands now, they all, in my opinion, have a shot at getting my vote. But I just, I really don't know what David did. I really need to hear from him. And I really need to hear from Mariana. I think I have a good read on Danielle. But, you know, I definitely want her to persuade me on why I should vote for her. What's up, y'all? And welcome to one more edition of Carl's Confessionals. King Carl style. 
So, well, congratulations to the final three that have made it. But coming from a king's perspective, here's my gig, dude. David, you ain't done shit. You ain't getting no votes. Congratulations on third place. Danielle, that was all a bunch of bullshit you fed me, huh? And I think you voted me out. Although you did play, uh, you know, a very competitive game, I'm not really hip on your style. Y'all both turned on me. Both of y'all. And I was your warrior. You're a king. And then we get to Mariana. Mariana outsmarted, outwitted all y'all. So my thing, Mariana, is simple. Congratulations. You were only you were the only one true to me. And Team Janet, y'all had a king on your side. And you turned on him and down with y'all. Oh hell. King Carl. Okay, we have finally made it to the final ascent. We are in a final three that I did not expect of David, Mariana, and Danielle, but we recently learned that apparently there was a day zero alliance between the three of them, and maybe that helped them get here to this point. I'm going into this final ascent without my mind being made up. I really need to hear from the three of them about their games, and um, I need to hear some complete honesty. From the jury perspective, I didn't hear what was going on from them at Crossroads. So what I need going into the final ascent is them to clear up their game, take ownership, so that I can decide who is the most worthy winner of the game. Um, I had three very different relationships with each of them. Um, David was by my side the majority of the time that I was in the game. And we were playing with a very, very similar frame of mind. We both kind of knew where we wanted to go next when we were talking, but I don't know what has happened since I have left the game with him. Danielle is someone who started a five-person alliance within our original party. However, it seems like she started a lot of alliances way at the beginning, so I need to know how it is that she got these final two with her, with David and Mariana, and what happened with those other relationships because she would come and tell me that we were tight and good to go, but that was pretty much it. There was nothing else. So I'd like to know what those relationships were that she actually trusted in and why David and Mariana were the ones she stuck with. Finally, for Mariana, um, I didn't have much strategy with her. It seemed like she was just trying to get by the entire time. So I need to know what she actually did in order to have her own agency in this game. Really, the only thing she said to me was that she wouldn't write my name down and she did. So I'm not, I'm not bitter about that, but I need to know where her real decisions were within this game. Um, I think going into this, I lean more towards David, but I am very open to whatever it is they're going to tell us at the final ascent because their games have been very hidden from me and I'm looking for the truth tonight. When people think of Expedition Online Season 3, Glacier Bay, they're definitely not going to be thinking about the winner. We have three finalists who a lot of us don't even want to vote for to completely honest. And that's kind of something sad to say. I mean, there's bits and pieces of why we might vote for one of the three people, but there's no real solid answer as to why we should vote for one of the three. You have somebody like Mariana who really has a bit present in the strategic game. And if she has, it's been non-existent or not fruitful and the only thing that she's really holding on to right now is her impeccable social game something that she's been able to use to her benefit to have people not want to vote for her and that's brought her pretty much to the end whether that's because people thought she was easy to beat or because she was just a masterful social strategist 
that's remained to be seen, and I don't think that's the case. You have somebody like David who stepped on a lot of crucial toes, a lot of people who are going to have some sway in this jury, and David didn't really seem to have any control in the game. Same with, well, we'll talk about it in a sec, but David had no real control in this game. He just kind of got by until, I hate to say it, I was voted out. And that's where he started getting some traction. Danielle, similarly, didn't really have any traction. Even worse, she didn't have any traction. She tried pitching my name or loosely she i believe she voted for me last two rounds before i even went home and that really doesn't give her any good social credit because she doesn't know what's going on half the time on the other hand she did a really good job of handling the last few rounds but a lot of people just don't like her at the end of the day this is a social game and if you can't prove to me how you used your social connections to further yourself, better your position, and do the best you can in this game, I don't know if I can vote for you. Because I have to vote for somebody at the end of the day, I'd be happy if they won. So, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to find who I'm gonna vote for a winner tonight. Okay, you guys, so here's, this is going to be a clincher tomorrow because I don't trust anybody. So I am going to do, they got mad that I was doing any, meeny, miny, mo. So I'm going to get two ping pong balls that we used during the challenges and write down two names on it and not a third name. And then I'm going to be blindfolded and I'm going to pick one out of a damn fish tank or fish bowl. That's how I'm going to vote. And they're going to be really mad. But they have ignored me this whole time. So, I'm doing my own thing. And that's how I'm going to vote. Um, I feel like, like when I left the room and they, everybody's like, oh, I'm tired, I want to go to sleep. And then, like, half an hour later, they're still in there. So, I feel like everything I said, they don't even listen to. And I feel like still, I thought... I liked Mike better, but then I just got a bad read. I don't know, but I feel like I'm at a bar and I'm trying to order a drink and the bartender just never hears me. That's how I feel with this group. Like I just like, I, I just try, I try to fit in. I try to give like good advice. I try to be caring. I try to be compassionate. I try to be everything. And they just don't have it for whatever reason. And I don't know. I don't really care because, like, oh, my God. I did fine in life without having to be accepted by this group. So I don't really know what to think. So I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm going to, like, I give my advice. I'm going to play my hand. I think what I'm expecting tomorrow is that David will continue to lie to save his ass. And that's going to be really disappointing. And I think that, I hope Mariana explains why she played a good game, because it seems like she did, but, like, I don't know that, and I guess the other people said that, too. And then Danielle, uh, like, you want to say she played a good game, but on the other hand, she played it before, and on the other hand, she just, like, makes some obnoxious, like, comment, and then makes that like crazy laugh and it's like ooh it's like scratching your nails on the board so um but she's you know I don't know I got, does she deserve it I, I'd i like to vote for Danielle because she's team red and I, I don't really know her game but it seemed like it was good so if I'm Janet I'm feeling good because I have two people out of three in the final three however the two people that she has are one is a sneaky compass stealer from taking candy from a baby kind of or running over a baby squirrel kind of taking a compass and the other person is kind of just boisterous like ooh. um i just 
you know, maybe she played a good game though, but I mean, I'm not, I'm, she's probably a nice person, but I'm just like, the whole persona is like a lot. Um, but I'm probably a lot too, but I don't know. I mean, you know, might be like two bulls in a room or like the opposite. I mean, I'm, I, if she was here in person, I'd be nice. Um, so this is my Jury Speaks video. <laughs> um, first of all, I think that um, all three of them, um, both you know uh, Mariana, David, and Danielle, all played um, very different games um, than I thought that they were. Um, you know, to to come to find out that they were all working together from day zero is definitely enlightening, but also very um, very frustrating. Um, I, I really did peg the right people, um, with what was going on, but, um, you know, they clearly were more connected between the three of them than I ever would have thought. Um, so good on them. Like that was, you know, I was blindsided in the end. Um, I think it, it's, you know, I felt like a Britney, a Britney move from, from big brother, right. Where you're sitting in the end with three people that are not going to take each other out. Um, and your only opportunity is to win safety. Um, and so I, I did feel a little um, kind of bitter toward um, specifically Danielle and David. Um, but all three of their games are very, very different. Um, you know, Mariana played very much, you know, you know, I'm, I'm the lone Kelly that doesn't have any friends and I'm just trying to make it round by round. Um and there's something to say about that game. There's something to say about, you know, making the right connections and being able to elude votes um, and, and to not be voted out and to only receive three votes through the entire rendezvous um, is really impressive. It's really, you know, I, I look at her and I think like, you know, she knew she was alone and, you know, unbeknownst to the rest of us, the only people she had were David and Danielle protecting her. So it's really interesting um, to to kind of like I'm I'm excited to kind of hear what she has to say about her own game. Um, Danielle is is <laughs> Danielle's an interesting character. Uh, I I liked her, but I always kept her at a distance. I I, I did read her very very well. Um, I knew she was going to cut whoever she needed to to get to the end. Um, so I I really did. Um, I valued the relationship I had with her, but I also knew that at some point we would have to turn on each other. Um, I, I did it first and didn't succeed. So I think, you know, unfortunately that's on me. So do, do I cost her a vote, um, simply because I'm, I'm a little annoyed that my, my plan didn't work. Right. So Danielle potentially is somebody that I'm really looking at sending my vote toward, um, you know, she played the right people. She had the right connections. She moved the right pieces. So I, I, I do feel like Danielle played a, a, um, an interesting game, um, a little too villainous for my liking, but, um, certainly played a good game. David is, I, I, I just don't, I don't understand his game. I feel like he. He made really tight bonds with specific people and then betrayed them and and made them feel inadequate or or, or disconnected from the game. Um, and it happened on numerous occasions throughout the game. And so I'm just intrigued and, and wondering, you know, why why he felt like, you know, taking those relationships and manipulating them was the best way to get to an end during, a, you know, a game for charity. Um, you know, I, I look at all three of them and I think they played a very boring game. You know, I, you know, they can say all they want that they made big moves and they, they did this, that, and the other thing. But, you know, if you had an alliance from day zero and there was a point where all three of them were scattered, like throughout the entire, you know, be, you know, pre pre rendezvous, you know, yeah, okay, you made other connections and you made other, but like I had a day zero alliance and I revamped and reconnected. Um, you know, I I pulled in David. I wanted to work with David. And so it's just interesting to to see <clears throat> them be so diehard on on and fall on the sword for the 
for the three of themselves. And yet they didn't feel like they needed to do that for anybody else. And so that's where I'm, I'm looking at David and thinking like you cost yourself the game. And if you're happy that the three of you made it to the end, then good on you because I'm not going to give my vote to somebody that's like, woohoo, I made it to the end with, with, th you know, the two people that were the most loyal to me. No, you made it to the end with people that played better games than you. Um, and you didn't even take into account that the people you were voting off were people that you could potentially be if you hadn't played so, you know, off the cuff and, and, and ridiculous, um, and, and throwing people under the bus. So, um, that's kind of how I feel about the three of them. Um, I think David has a lot of work to do to get my vote. I think Danielle could potentially sway me. Um, and I think if Mariana can just commit to some, some, something that makes me feel like she was playing the game, um, kind of behind the scenes, then, you know, she could potentially get my vote too. David's going to have a hard time though. Um, and not because of bitterness, but because I think the way he chose to manipulate the relationships he was building was toxic. And I, I, I just didn't like that. So um, that's where I'm sitting with, with my jury vote. Um, it's up in the air. I, I don't know where I'm going to vote. Um, I could potentially vote for any of the three, but um, they, they all have some work to do. So I've done a lot of thinking since last night about who's going to get my jury vote. And one conversation that I can't stop thinking about is something that happened at one of the later crossroads. I think it could have been the one where I went home, but we were talking about um, if we were on the jury, what we were looking for when we were making our decision about jury votes. And Danielle and I kind of had the same idea about Survivor being a game of outwitting, outplaying, and outlasting. And it's not really any one area that's more important than the other. It's looking at, like, who played the most balanced game with a combination of all three. And I was thinking about that a lot last night when I was considering all their games. Like, for the outwitting, I was thinking about, like, strategy um, and alliances and, like, how connected they were and how well they were able to hide those connections um, and be sort of at the forefront of making decisions about who was going home. Um, and then I was also thinking about challenge performance, which I think is a little bit less important than um, the strategy component, but it's still something that I need to take into account. Um, and then outlasting, I mean, they all outlasted the rest of us, and they all got to the end in their own way, um, which I think they should all be commended for, even if some people don't think that one of the finalists played a very strong game. But after thinking about all that, um, I do want to hear their speeches tonight because Final Ascent is definitely something that I also want to take into account um, when I'm thinking about who's getting my vote um, because I know that David is probably going to be a really good talker. I mean, he is a real estate agent, and I can definitely picture him um, – giving a good speech um, and having some really good, solid answers to the questions um, that the jury is going to ask him. And I feel like maybe Danielle and Mariana aren't going to be as strong in that portion. Um, but as much as I want to like wait and see um, what their speeches are going to be, I feel like I am already leaning towards voting for Danielle and not because um, we were like close friends during the game and she was one of my allies. It's not that. It's that I really do feel that she played the best game. Um, I feel like her name like never once came up when we were talking about who to vote. I mean, maybe the closest it could have been um, was pre-rendezvous um, when Cupini and Mariana and Bambi were saying that they didn't feel as connected to her as they did to me when we were on that swapped party. But other than like, up, at least up until I got voted out, her name never really came up um, in who to vote out. And Mariana's name came up pretty much every round. And David, um, after the Haley vote, he was sort of alone and desperate for a while. Um, and he was sort of looking for, like, anyone um, to, like, come save him and help him through the next few votes. Whereas Danielle was, like, very well connected enough not to need to do any of that. Um... I also think that, I mean, David won a couple challenges, but Danielle also won a couple challenges, so she also has that going for her. And I just feel like she played the most well-rounded game where she was able to be connected um, to a bunch of people, um, but 
also like have a bunch of different alliances that no one else knew about like if that day zero thing was true the alliance that they talked about um at crossroads last night with the final three um if that was a real alliance then danielle did a really good job of hiding that from me and from other people like i think mike had no idea i think josh had no idea um she also like she was able to sort of make take the target off of her even when people were discussing how um she like had played in expedition games before and she seemed like a huge threat and she was able to successfully take that target off of her and keep her name out of everyone's mouth for a bunch of votes in a row which i thought was really impressive and i was also really close with mariana and i do um I am considering voting for her because she's definitely the person in the game that I would want to keep in touch with the most after the season because I feel like we had a really good um, bond that went sort of past strategy and game talk. Um, but it is it will be kind of hard for me to vote for her just because I don't think she played um, that strong of a game. I mean, I am really proud of her for outlasting um, a bunch of people and making it to the end despite sort of having her name come up in every round. But she was out of the loop on a lot of the votes. She wasn't really like in the forefront of making the decisions. And she did also play her compass and her token when she didn't need to. But yeah, I think I'm over time now, so I'm going to stop. But I am leaning towards Danielle. Final confessional, um, and excited for the final ascent tonight. So, um, kind of the thoughts on the final three. I was obviously I was I was rooting for Mike. I think um, if it wasn't Bambi, I was hoping it was going to be Mike because I thought that they had played the most complete game so far um, in terms of playing a good game, making some good moves, being underdogs at slight points, but also catering to the jury. Because I think looking at all few of those aspects it's really important that you know whoever won couldn't just play a great game and be deceitful couldn't just be you know kind of a background of the goat but had to make some moves throughout and I thought you know all of them did a pretty good job consistently um so now looking at the final jury here so you know first off we have Mariana um so I am really curious about Mariana's speech and how she's going to answer the questions you know I think what she's going to have to prove is that her moves were out of survival but were also strategic um Otherwise, I think people are going to say, you know, what did you do to win this game other than just survive, which is an incredibly important part. But, you know, outside of that, I'm really curious to see her answers to that. Um, for Danielle, she was a bit of a wild card, and it seems like her strategy was no strategy at all. And so I'm curious what of that strategy was intentional versus what of it was just, you know, the flavor of the day. And so when looking at that, I think we're going to have to, we're going to probably have a lot of answers as to you know, what was really intentional. And that's what I'm really looking for with everybody, intentionality, because the best players in this game do things intentionally. Um, and then lastly with David. Um, so the biggest thing that's going to come up is how David got his idol from Katie, um, or got his compass from Katie. And so that's the big question. And so if he outright says, I took the compass, I knew what I was doing, and I did so because I knew that was the only way that I was going to win this game. It wasn't personal against Katie by any means, but it was a means for me to win this game, and it was strategy, and it was strategic, and it was intentional. I'll respect that. However, if he just goes on an apology tour and says he didn't know what was happening and didn't want, if he kind of goes down that route, I think then it's just kind of, that was just a, not a great move. So, um, so we'll see. Uh, overall, I think my vote is completely up in the air, which is wild right now because it's, it's, it's actually going into this. And if it wasn't Mike, I think that's what everyone's in the boat for. So everyone wants to really hear exactly how it's going to go. So, you know, we'll see here in a little bit, but good night.